Indian festivals all have dates that shift, okay, and they all shift together. So Diwali is always twenty-ish days after the Sera, yeah. right? Uh, and they shift by about ten days every year. But mm. Sankranti is one festival which doesn't shift. It's always like fourteenth or fifteenth January every year. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, a because primarily there is a difference in the length of the Indian calendar and the uh, Gregorian calendar. But, but also Sankranti isn't it also called Uttarayan? So that's when the sun. You know, starts moving northwards and all okay. of that. Okay, fair enough. First of all, Sankranti is an Indian festival. It mm. is not a Western festival, so there is no reason it should be tied to the Gregorian calendar. But yes, it has something to do with Uttarayan, right? Mm. Uh, Uttarayan is when, I mean, basically from June through December, the sun's position in the sky starts shifting slowly southwards, and the days are getting shorter. And then from December to June, it starts shifting northward again, and the days start getting longer, which is like a time for celebration. So um, that is Uttarayan, right? December. Yes. So why do we celebrate in January when twenty first December is when Uttarayan starts, right? Wait. So, so Sankrant is not Uttarayan. Sankrant is Uttarayan, but we celebrate it on the wrong date. That's what we are going to find out today, oh. right? But before that, hmm. I need to explain what the word Sankrant means, right? Okay. So you know that there are twelve zodiacs. Yeah. Right? The ancient people they looked at the sky and they wanted to divide it into twelve parts because of twelve months. Hmm. So what they did was they sliced up the sky hmm. into slices called a zodiac, right? right? So in Indian it is like Mesh Ram. Uh, and so Rishabh on, right? and, uh, and all yeah. of that, right? Now, and they were also pretty good at tracking the position of sun and moon and the planets in the different zodiacs. Correct, correct. So over the course of a year, the sun makes a three sixty degree circle around the background of the stars. The firmament, as it is called. Correct. Yeah. So now there are these twelve zodiacs, and there are these imaginary lines. Separating each zodiac. Hmm. So when the sun crosses one of those lines from one zodiac to the other, that is called a sankranti. Oh, okay? sun sankranti. Kranti. Yes, oh. kranti <laughs> means actually pushing or moving. Yeah. Okay, so kranti revolution is, but really not revolution. It's pushing. Okay, so sankranti right. is transition. Yeah, but the sun is not the English wala sun. It is sun. sankranti. Yeah. Right. Notice though hmm. that a sankranti happens twelve times a year. Right? Yeah. In fact, some Indian calendars use sankrantis to count months. Okay. Okay. I mean, we think of Indian calendars as lunar calendars, right? Because that's what the North Indian calendars are based on. Hmm. But South Indian calendars, I mean, Tamil and Malayalam calendars are based on sankranti, so they are solar calendars. Okay. Right? A month starts with a sankranti. And uh, they don't need an adhik mass. They don't need a leap year. Uh, yeah, because so, the sun basically travels twelve zodiacs in the whole of a year. So exactly, they don't right. need any adhik or right. whatever. Exactly. Uh, uh, and in fact, uh, you know, Orissa, Assam, etc., West Bengal, they do an even more complicated thing. They have a combination of lunar calendar and solar calendar that I will not get into. But basically, huh. the point is that Sankranti. Is a way of dividing the year into twelve parts based on the twelve zodiacs. Essentially, twelve okay. equal parts right. based on the zodiac. Yeah, right. So Sankranti doesn't mean Uttarayan, hmm. right? So why are we celebrating the one in January? Fairly simple. It is the Sankranti that happens after the Uttarayan, right? And Uttarayan is a good thing because that's sort of from this day on the days are going to get longer. The sun. Is going to be out much more, so you know we are kind of uh, celebrating that. Correct. The Sankranti we celebrate is called the Makar Sankranti for the reason that this is transition of sun into the Makar zodiac. Rashi. Yeah. Right? Okay. Huh? Yeah, but wait, day is getting longer. Hmm. Uttar and we'll need to come back to that. Oh yeah. Just put a pin in that. Go on. So it goes into Makar, the zodiac yeah. sign. So, by the way, I mean the reason Sankrantis are important is that because for some calendars they are the beginning of a month, right? Hmm. Can you guess why the Tamil, Malayalam, etc. calendars have a new year sometime in April? Because that's where uh, the sun transitions into Mesh, and Mesh is considered like the beginning of the zodiac, right? Yes, Mesh Aries is considered the beginning of the zodiac. Can you guess why? 
आई आई डोंट नो इट इज द फर्स्ट संक्रांति आफ्टर द स्प्रिंग इक्विनॉक्स राइट सो यू नो मार्च ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट इज the time when the days are equal so that pretty much is the beginning of spring right so the first sankranti the two months after that is spring ah. and that's why our year starts on the sankranti after uh, that date right the so entire, that's why it's in april sometime yeah the entire confusion basically stems from this 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 mixture of solar and lunar calendars mixture of looking at the sun and the moon and trying to you know yeah. figure out a coordinated system yeah. of time to measure the passage of time across a year yeah across one revolution around the sun right. but okay that explains why we celebrate makar sankranti yeah. but why is makar sankranti on different dates still every year yeah. because so i mean if you have noticed sometimes it is on 14th january sometimes it is on 15th january yeah again when you think about it the reason is fairly simple okay like how the sankranti hmm. the crossing over of the sun into the zodiac is a very specific point in the sky imaginary point correct right? so that happens at exactly the same time every, every year, year right yeah. but now imagine the sun huh. okay and now the earth the sun is here exactly that's when it crosses over into makar huh. now when the earth goes around the sun huh. and it comes back huh. when it has finished one year Huh. the earth has done an extra 1/4 rotation because the year is 365.25 days correct right? so the next makar sankranti is going to be 6 hours later next year right so if it is on uh, you know 14th january 9:30 am it this year it will be 6 hours later at 3:30 pm and then the next year it is going to be 6 hours later so again 9:30 pm right yeah and you know if this kept happening hmm. it would keep shifting 6 hours ahead and it would sh- keep going further ahead but what happens every 4 years leap year leap year so then it shifts one whole day back oh. right so that's why it goes forward 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 back yeah but typically it is 2 days on 14th and 2 days on 15th what how is that make sense because yeah. then you have to have 3 days no of right. 14th and then one day of 15th correct so basically what happens is that 9:30 am hmm. 14 january 3:30 pm 14 january 9:30 pm is after sunset so that is counted in the next day as far as our tithi is concerned oh right 9:30 pm means it kind of makes sense to put it on the next date yeah. available right. okay so that explains the 14th and 15th or uh, different date of sankrant mm. but then you said that uttarayan happens on 21st of december yes. sankrant is 14th of january that's a gap of 25, 25 days, days. Yeah. yeah right to explain that we need to first understand why does uttarayan dakshinayan happen at all right okay. so let's say this is the earth okay and this is the earth's axis right and the earth's axis is tilted by 23 and 1/2 degrees everybody knows that hmm. okay i am just going to hold this pen up indicating this is the axis of the earth okay okay now the reason we have uttarayan and dakshinayan is that if there is a guy standing here and his head is pointing this way so straight up in the sky is here hmm. the sun is a little to the south hmm. of straight up but when the earth has gone all the way around 6 months later hmm. now this guy is standing here and the sun is to the north right hmm. that is why we get uttarayan and dakshinayan right and when the tilt this is the axis of rotation when the tilt is maximum away from the sun that's when we get the most south and after this point on the sun is going to start shifting towards the north towards the north in Correct. fact this is march at this point uh, the guy's head is pointed straight at the sun if you will Correct. notice right Correct. okay now the problem with the earth's axis of rotation hmm. is that itself is rotating if you have ever seen a spinning top yeah and you touch it a little bit any disturbance and it causes the top while spinning yeah. it goes like this right yeah. the same thing is happening with earth it is spinning like this but this spin is itself spinning spinning okay mm. and this happens very slowly which the ancients did not know about mm. let us try to understand what happens when this the axis itself changes direction okay at this point this is 
21st December. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the earth maximum tilted away from the sun. Mm -hmm. And at that time, when you look at the sun and when you look at what is behind, you notice that this is where Makar is. Okay. Correct. So this so, is the line separating the previous zodiac from Makar. Correct. So right, when the earth passes like this, that's when the sun is crossing into Makar. Correct. And about 2000 years ago or 1800 years ago, this used to happen on 21st December. Okay. Okay. So they celebrated Makar Sankranti on 21st December because that was the shortest day. Correct. But then over a thousand years, the tilt changed. Okay. Like this, right? It's going like this. So tilt changed. Huh. Now you will notice that the this is not the maximum tilt away from the sun. Correct. Okay. For maximum tilt away from the sun, you have to be here. Oh. A little before, right? So now notice if the earth is going around like this, maximum tilt happens here. Because of the precession of the axis of the orbit. Correct. And now this is December 21st. Hmm. But notice that now the sun is, is not. Yeah, it's before Makar. It has not yet reached Makar. So now 25 days later is when sun actually enters Makar. Okay. Oh, so what happened is the following that over a period of 1800 years, the, the precession of the earth okay. caused the uh, southernmost point huh. Uttarayan hmm. to happen earlier and earlier and earlier. Huh. But the southernmost uh, point is always December 21st because our calendar has been designed like that. Correct. Right. But uh, as a result, the date of Makar Sankranti kept shifting forward and the way it works is that every 70 or 71 years the date of Makar Sankranti shifts forward by one day and this will keep happening okay ah. and after 26,000 years the date will have shifted entirely all the way Back. around the calendar uh, I mean, there will be a time when Makar Sankranti will be happening in uh, August, right? But after 26,000 years, we will be back to 21st December. Yeah, so in a lifetime, you get to experience Makar Sankranti on probably three different dates, 14, 15, and then maybe 16th also of January. Yes, the young ones. The young least. ones. No, also when we become old, man. <laughs> yes. So probably, who knows, yeah. I might still get to live 71 right. years. Yeah. You never know. Right. All right. Uh, I I knew that the Earth's precession yeah. uh, happened, the Earth's uh, hmm. axis precessed, but hmm. I didn't realize that that was also connected to the Makar Sankranti See, date. Everything related with the zodiac shifts forward by one day because of this. Now we are in a position to explain the new year, right? They wanted new year to be the first day of spring, the first day which was where the day was longer than the night, hmm. which is March 22nd. Hmm. But again, you know, they decided that around 200 AD or so and then over 1800 years that date shifted forward by 20 days and that's why most of our New Year's days uh, are in April instead of being on March 22nd. Correct. The yeah. Indian New Year days though. Yeah, yeah, I of think course. The Ugadi and uh, all of those. Yeah. Ugadi in Canada. Right. Also, but another interesting thing hmm. about the tilt hmm. is the following, right? Now, this is, we are rotating like this, hmm. which means all the stars here will be going around. But the star which is here. The North Star, the Pole Star. Pole Star. It stays fixed in place, right? Correct. But now, if this shifts. That is also going to change. That is going to change. So, that has happened, right? Uh, I mean, right now, uh, the Alpha Ursae Minoris hmm. uh, is the pole star, right? But from 1700 BC to 300 AD, there were two other stars called Kochab and Furkad. And they were actually the twin pole stars in yeah. those days. And this thing being our pole star is a current thing. Later on, it will shift something else so that also is explained by that this. is actually how i knew about the precession of the axis yeah but i didn't realize that that also connected with uh, makar sankranti in this manner hmm. so essentially trying to calculate and map the passage of time hmm. is why this entire shifting of dates constantly between the gregorian and indian calendars and even in indian hmm. various indian calendars happens yeah see 
think about is there are three different things, right? Because on a day-to-day -day basis, just looking up at the moon's phase is a very useful way to track time over a period of a month. Correct. But over a period of a year, uh, you want to track time based on the seasons, hmm. shortest day, longest day, because that is what determines agricultural decisions, right? Correct. So that's why uh, everything is around the earth going around the sun and being maximum tilt away, hmm. right? But the absolute value of earth around the sun without taking the tilt is a slightly different duration, yeah. right? And that is what causes all of these shifts. Yeah, and precession was also not something that they could easily detect back in that day because yeah. if it yeah. takes a whole 71 years to precess by one day worth of axis tilt, yeah. then it was it was not going to be easy to understand yeah. that. Maybe, yeah. they, I mean, it's, it's very fascinating the way yeah. it is. I still don't know why Makar Sankranti is associated with your Tilgul's and your kite flying See, and all of that. I mean, so, we don't really know the reasons for that. Historical record doesn't say anything, hmm. but we can speculate, right? In the Diwali episode, hmm. we talked about how people take existing rituals or things that are happening <laughs> yeah. seasonally and then attach it to the nearest festival that you're celebrating, right? Hmm. So I can imagine that eating Tilgul is that okay, this is now the peak of winter, hmm. so you should be eating calorie-dense foods, hmm. right? And that is eating Tilgul. And oh, there is a, a festival that we want to celebrate. How should we celebrate? Well, let's eat extra Tilgul today, right? <laughs> Another thing is that, okay, it is winter. The days are starting to get longer hmm. uh, now. Maybe we should try spending more time in the sun. So uh, let's play kites, right? So that's something you want to do in January, February, etc. And again, attach that to the nearest festival. Yeah, right? I mean, some traditions just get uh, formed because uh, it's conducive hmm. for that tradition to yeah. get formed. So overall, what I wanted to say hmm. is that Sankranti, of hmm. course, is Makar Sankranti. It is entry of the sun into Makar. Hmm. And every four years, the date changes because of the leap year thing. Correct. But every 71 years it shifts forward by one i mean it started off like around 1800 years ago as being the celebration of uttarayan so december 21st but then because of the precession of the earth's axis it has shifted and now another 24000 years it will come back to actual 21st december right hmm. the big point that i wanted to make hmm. is that all of this date shifting in, especially in the Indian calendar seems very random but when you look at it and when you understand it from an astronomical perspective there is a lot of elegant logic there. Yeah yeah, and the elegant logic is what the ancients uh, used when constructing these things called horoscopes hmm. that you may have heard about and yeah. if you strongly believe in horoscopes hmm. then I strongly urge you to check out the episode we did on the entire concept of Jyotish Shastra you are going to hate us for this, but uh, you are probably also going to love us for this. Go check it out and let us know what you think about that. And uh, while you do that, also why not subscribe to the WhatsApp community that we have created where we discuss this and a lot of other things. Good fun we are having in that community. Shrikant, Naveen, Future IQ.